Oh, praise you, the most high. So tonight's topic is called the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation, okay? Let's open up with the book of Psalms, okay? I want to start there. Psalms chapter 18, verse 1. Let's start there, okay? Read that for me. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 18, verse 1. Come on. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Mm -hmm. Come on. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the whole of my salvation, and my high tower. That's what we all need to understand, brothers and sisters. The most High God, he's our rock. He is our fortress and our deliverer from all sin. Whatever sin you're in, whatever struggles that you're struggling with, the most High God will deliver you. Understand that. Don't doubt, don't fear, don't be double-minded, but understand that which is written will come to pass. The Lord will surely deliver us, okay? We, the only thing that we have to do is keep God's commandments and keep fighting. Read again, verse 2. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 2. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom my I will God, trust. My God, my strength, my God. The, listen, the Lord is our God and he's our strength. Understand that. Read. In whom I will trust. We must all put our trust in the most high God of heaven and earth. The God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 3, okay? Give me Proverbs 3 verse 5. We must put our trust in the most high God. You understand? Because I know how it goes. You understand? Whenever we find ourselves in, the, in, in trouble, Satan puts a spirit, demonic spirit on us that you're even afraid to open this book and read and repent and get your mind right. Satan, listen. This day... The most high God is with us. Give me that in Proverbs 3 verse 5. Watch this. Come on, come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Mm -hmm. And not unto thine own understanding. You see that thing? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding, brothers. Our forefathers in the past, they fought this good fight. We must do the same. You understand? Go ahead. In all thy ways, acknowledging mm -hmm. and it shall direct thy paths. You see that thing in all our ways, we must acknowledge the most high God, the Lord will direct our paths. Jump down to verse 11. Watch this. This is another thing that we all need to understand. Watch this. Verse 11. Come on. Verse 11. My mm -hmm. son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. You see that thing? We must not despise the correction of the most high. We must not, we must not despise or get tired of God's commandments. Read that again, verse 11. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 11. Read. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Neither be wary of his correction. You see that thing? Neither be wary of his correction. Don't get tired of God's correction. God's correction is what? Is, is going to be what? Is held unto our spirits. Is held unto our bones. Unto our minds. The Lord will heal us. All we have to do is not be wary of God's correction. Next verse. Go ahead. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects. Come on. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. You see that thing? The Lord delights in us when we don't become wary of his correction. We must return back to this book, brothers and sisters. We must hold on to this book. I know we are at war. I know we are under attack. I know we're going through our personal trials. But as long as we stay in this Bible, the Most High God will have mercy upon us and he will deliver us according to as it is written. Understand that, okay? So go back to Psalms chapter 18. Read verse 2 again. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 18, verse 2. Come on. The Lord is my rock and my fortress mm. and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. Read. My partner and the whole of my salvation. And mm -hmm. my high tower. You see that thing? The most high God Christ, he's the horn of our salvation and our high tower. Watch this. Read verse 6 now. Watch this thing right here. You know what? Keep reading. Read verse 3. Mm. Go ahead. I will call upon the Lord who mm. is worthy to praise. Read. So shall I be saved from my enemies. That part right there. You see, when we praise the most high God by keeping his commandments and not being wary of his correction, he says what? He says he will save us from our enemies. Go ahead. 
the book of Psalms chapter 18, verse 4. Really? The souls of death compassed me, mm -hmm. and floods of ungodly men made me afraid. We see that thing, and the floods of ungodly men made me, made me afraid. Why? Because we're surrounded by ungodly spirits all the time. When we try to do good, Satan is always there trying to take us back to our sins. Read it again. Come on, come on. Verse 4 again. The book of Psalms chapter 18, verse 4. The sorrows of death compass me, and mm. the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Read. The sorrows of hell compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. You see that the snares of death prevented me. But watch what, watch what David says here. Next verse. Go ahead. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. That's what we all need and to understand. When you are in distress, listen, you call upon the most high God. The God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We repent and ask the Lord to have mercy upon us. Guess what? The most high God will hear our cry. Read the verse again, verse 6. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 18, verse 6. Mm -hmm. In my distress, I called upon the Lord mm. and cried unto my God. Pray. He heard my voice out of his temple. Come on. And my cry came before him, mm -hmm. even into his ears. You see what happens? Our job, brothers and sisters, is to obey God's commandments. You understand? Keep fighting because this work is not going to be easy. I'm not going to lie to you. This work, this is going to be hard. We must fight. We must endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Iron sharpeneth iron. Go ahead, verse 7. Then the earth shook and trembled. Come on. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken. Because he was wrath. Because he was angry. He was angry. He was, why was the Lord angry? The most high God is angry because of what the, these heathens are doing to us. The, the most high God is angry because of what? The snares that they said privily for us to trap us in sin. The most high God gets angry about that thing. Our job, brothers and sisters, is to fight. The Lord shall surely deliver us. Understand that thing. Never ever think that you cannot come back to this book and repent. Get, don't get it twisted. Don't let Satan take the wheel, brothers and sisters. Understand that. Hold on to this book. Never let it go. Don't get weary of God's correction. Understand that thing. Watch this. Read verse, read verse 20. Watch this. Because in verse 9, verse 7, that's when the Lord will come down. You understand? The Lord, the Lord is allowing Israel to get themselves together. But on this day, the Lord will come down and the earth is going to shake. You understand? The nations will tremble. They will understand it's time for the Lord to deliver his, his people, his sons and daughters. And the nations will not be happy when the Lord makes his descent. Give me that in Revelation chapter 11. Okay? Drop what you got. Give me Revelation chapter 11 verse 18. Watch this. Revelation chapter 11 verse 18. The nations will not be happy. The nations are not looking forward for the Lord to return. They are not looking forward to that. We're looking forward to that. Why? Because we're in captivity. We're catching hell out here. Read that. Revelation chapter 11 verse 18. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 18. Come on. And the nations were angry. Mm. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets. Really? And to the saints. And them that fear thy name. Mm. Small and great. And shouldest destroy them, which destroy the earth. You see what the Lord is saying? This is what the John the Revelator is seeing in the spirit. He says, and the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the day that they should be judged for the evils that they are doing upon this earth and upon God's people. He says the nations were angry. The nations are not looking forward for the Lord to return. They are not looking forward to that. Not only are they not looking for the Lord to return, they are they're, they're angry that Israel is waking up. Understand that. They are angry that we're returning back to our history, our heritage, our culture, to our God. They are angry about that thing. Why? Because we're going to rule the earth. We're going to live forever. The nations are angry about that thing. Read the verse again, verse 18. I want this verse to marinate. We need to understand the war that we're up against. Okay? Read again, verse 18. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 18. Read. Right. And the nations were angry, and their hmm. wrath is come. Come on. And the time of the day, that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. 
and to the saints and them mm. that fear their name, small and great, and should mm. destroy them which destroy the earth. The Lord is going to destroy these nations that are destroying the earth with their what? With their, with their experiments that they are doing. You understand? With the digging the oil of the earth, the, the blood of the earth, causing earthquakes. You understand? Creating all these diseases to destroy and kill us. Understand that the most High God is watching. The Lord will send his son to come and set order on this planet earth. And now we're waking up. Understand that thing. Brothers and sisters, the time is at hand. The Lord is coming back. Okay? We need to hold on, brothers and sisters. We need to hold on. That's why the Lord commanded us to do this. Give me that in Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Gather yourself together. Yeah. You must what? Gather yourself together. The Lord is commanding us that we must gather ourselves together. We must gather together. Why must we gather together? Come on. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. You see why he says we must gather ourselves together? He says we must gather ourselves together because we are a nation that is despised by all these nations on earth. He says, O nation, not desire. No nation desire us, but the Lord desires us. The Lord, he desires us. And I'm going to prove that thing. Give me that in... Um, Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Watch this. The Lord says we must gather ourselves together because we are a nation that is not desired. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 9. Mm -hmm. For the Lord's portion is his people. Mm. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. You see that thing? We are the Lord's portion. We are the Lord inheritance. Watch this. Next verse. Come on. He found him in a, in a desert land. Mm -hmm. And in the waste howling wilderness. He laid him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. What did the Lord do? He kept him as the apple of his eye. This is what you need to understand, brothers and sisters. We are the apple of God's eye. We are the apple of God's, we are God's favorite. Understand that. Because I know some of us, there's a low self-esteem and all that. It's time to end that. Okay? Them days are over. Read the verse again, verse 10, so we understand why the Lord says, we must gather together, O nation not desired. But the Lord, he desires us. We are the apple of God's eye. Read that again, verse 10. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 10. He found him in a desert land. And in mm. the waste county wilderness, he led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. You see that thing? He kept him as the apple of his eye. We are the apple of God's eye. So whoever touches us, he touches the what he touches the eyes of the most high. Understand that. Understand what's going on here, Israel. Watch this. Now, let's get into the topic now. I just wanted to go on that, okay. So we understand. Give me that in Daniel chapter 10, verse 11 now. Let's get into the topic now. Let's get into it. Okay, Daniel 10, verse 11. Let's start there. Watch this. What you need to understand about our forefathers is our forefathers kept God's commandments. Our forefathers fought for their nation. Our forefathers studied for the benefits of themselves and for their nation so their nation can benefit. We must what? We must come to that. This is the level we need to come to. We need to come to a level where it's not just about, it's not about us. It's never been about us. When you read the Bible, our forefathers were selfless. You see the example our Lord and Savior left behind for us. He was selfless. He was about his people. He was about his nation. And guess what? The prophets that came before him, they were also in the same spirit as himself. Now read that. Daniel 10, verse 11. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 11. Go ahead. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly and a man greatly beloved. Mm -hmm. Understand the words that I speak uh, that I speak unto you, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. So now the angel is speaking to our forefather Daniel here. You understand? He says, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak unto thee. And stand upright. He says, stand up manfully. That's what he's telling Daniel. For unto thee am, not, am I now sent. And when he has spoken this word unto me, 
I stood trembling. Watch this. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, Fear mm -hmm. not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand mm. and to strengthen thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. You see what he's saying? He says, from the first day when Daniel set his mind to understand what this Bible is saying. So that goes into all of us. When we come into this truth, we must set our minds to understand what the Bible is saying. And how do we get understanding? Get that in Psalms 111 and 10 real quick. I know I'm jumping ahead, but I'm going to read this scripture later on. Psalms 111 and 10. Daniel, our forefather, he set his mind to understand what this Bible is saying. Watch this. Psalms 111 and 10. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. You see that thing? So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding. So Daniel had a good understanding. Because what did he do? He kept God's commandments. And the praise of the Lord endured forever in his spirit. Go back to where he was at now. Daniel 10. Read verse 12 again. The book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, to chasten thyself before thy God. To chasten those thyself before the most high God. So what was Daniel doing? Guess what? Daniel has chastity. He had discipline in God's laws. You understand? He was a true disciple. Because he says he chastened himself. First, he set his mind to understand. What did he do? He kept God's commandments so he can get a good understanding. You understand? Because why? Our forefather Daniel was disciplined in God's commandments. That's why now the Lord saw fit to send an angel down there to come and comfort Daniel and to give him understanding. Read. Thy words were heard. Mm. And I am come for thy words. You see that thing? He says, thy words were heard. And I'm come for thy words. So the Lord saw fit to send an angel down there to comfort Daniel and to expound unto him many things. You understand? Give me Daniel 10 verse 2. Jump up to verse 2. Watch this. Because the reason why our forefather Daniel, the Lord saw fit to send an, a, the angel. Who's the angel here? Michael. He sent Michael the archangel. The archangel down here to speak to Daniel. Watch this. Daniel 10 verse 2. Watch this thing right here. The book of Daniel to the two. two. Mm -hmm. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Read. I ate no pleasant bread. Mm. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I know I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So Daniel, our forefather, was fasting for 21 days straight. 21 days. It can be done. Don't get it twisted. It can be done. You have to build your spirit up to get to that level. But it can be done. Understand that. Our forefathers did it. We can do it today. We just have to build our spirits up and prepare ourselves for the trials and tribulations that are coming. For those that hour of temptation that's coming before the Lord returns. Understand that. Okay, come on. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekel, Okay, so now, what we want to notice is that our forefather Daniel, he was, he was fasting. So that, Dan, that means Daniel gave himself to do what? To fasting. Not only fasting, but Daniel gave himself to prayer as well. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. We come in back here. Give me 2 Ezra 6 verse 29. 2 Ezra. Because our forefather Daniel was not the only one that had the same spirit. Our forefather Ezra, he had the same spirit as well. So is the rest of all the other prophets that came before them. Okay, and after them. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 29. Watch this. I'm showing you the characteristics of our forefathers, how they moved. You understand? And the things that the Lord expounded unto them. So we, the same spirit that was poured on our forefathers back then, it can be poured on us today. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 29. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 29. Go ahead. And when you talk with me, behold, I look by little and little upon him before whom I stood. Read. And these words said he unto me, I am come to show thee the time of the night to come. 
So now, this is an angel here speaking to our forefather Esdras. The same way, likewise, the angel Michael, Archangel Michael was sent to speak to our forefather Daniel, is what is going on here. The name of this angel here, give me that in um, 2nd Esdras chapter 4 verse 1. Okay, let's see who is this angel that is that, that the most High God sent down to speak to our forefather Esdras. Watch this. Read. Second of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer. You see that thing? The angel Uriel was sent to our forefather Esdras. Okay. To do what? To comfort him, to expound unto him the things that he didn't understand. So likewise today, if we want to get understanding, we must first discipline ourselves. We must apply our mind to the laws of God. Then the most high God will see fit to send an angel to minister unto us to give us understanding. Understand that thing. Now, go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 29 again. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 6 verse 29. Mm -hmm. And when he talked with me, behold, I looked by little and little upon him before whom I stood. Come on. And these words said he unto me, I am come to show thee the time of the night to come. Come on. If thou wilt pray yet more mm. and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. You see what the angel is saying? This is Uriel speaking. It says, if thou wilt pray yet more. Meaning what? As does he, he, he had a habit of what? A habit of prayer. So that means he developed a good habit to pray to the Lord always. You understand? Not only that, but he also developed a good habit of fasting. Because here the angel is saying, if thou will pray yet more and fast seven days again, that means he did it before. He says, I'm going to tell thee greater things by day than I have heard, meaning from the Most High. Go ahead. For thy voice is heard before the Most High. Mm. For the mighty have seen thy righteous dealings. You see that thing? Yes. The Most High God has seen Esdras' righteous dealings. Because Esdras what, what was his righteous dealings? The keeping of God's laws. Go ahead. He had seen also thy chastity, mm. which thou hast had ever since thy youth. You see that thing? The same thing that was said about our forefather Daniel, the angel is saying the same thing here to Ezra. You understand? He says, I've seen also thy chastity, which thou hast had ever since thy youth. Because what was Ezra doing in his youth? Hold this. Give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 6. I'm going to show you something. This is what our forefather Esdras was doing. This is the same thing that our forefather Daniel was doing. Sarak chapter 6 verse 18. Watch this. Sarak 6 verse 18. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 18. Go ahead. My son, get instruction from the youth up. Mm. So shall thou find wisdom till thy, thine old age. You see, what, you see what the Lord is saying? He says, my son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So do you see what Ezra and Daniel, they were doing? They were gathering instructions from their youth. That's what their focus was. Their focus was to gather instruction from their youth. From who? From the leaders, the elders, the leadership that the Lord has set. This is what they was doing. Sirach chapter 6, jump down to verse 32. Watch this. He says, gather instruction from thy youth up so shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. Because Daniel and them, they had wisdom in their old age. Read verse 32. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. You see that thing? If thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Because that's what you need to understand. You must be taught. You have to be taught. Read. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. You see the key in this verse right here, it says, if thou will apply thy mind, if thou will apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. You're going to be extremely wise. But the key to be extremely wise is application of God's commandments. You see that part right there? If thou will apply thy mind, if thou will apply thy mind, it says thou shalt be prudent. Go ahead. If thou love to hear, thou shalt mm. receive understanding. You see, if thou love to hear what? Thou love to hear the laws of God, gathering instruction from thy youth. Read. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Meaning what? If you open your spiritual ears, you're going to be wise. 
You're not going to reject the voice of your teachers. You understand? You're not going to do that, but you're going to incline your ears to hear understanding. Go ahead. Stand in the multitude of the elders mm -hmm. and cleave unto him that is wise. You see what the Bible is saying? It's a stand in the multitude of the elders because that's what Daniel and them was doing. That's what Ezra and them was doing and all the other prophets, our forefathers that came before and after them. Read. Be willing to hear every godly discourse mm. and let not the parables of understanding escape you. You see that thing? He says, be willing to hear every godly discourse because a fool, a fool will not be willing to hear every godly discourse. This is what a fool will do. I'm going to show you what fools do. Watch this. Give me that in Sirach chapter 21. Okay. Sirach 21 verse 15. Start of verse 14. I'm going to show you what fools do. Wise men and women, they don't, they, they don't do this, but fools, this is what they do. Watch this. Sirach 21 verse 14. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 14. Mm -hmm. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Go ahead. He will not hold, he will hold no knowledge as long as living. You see that as long as they are alive on this earth, they're not going to hold no knowledge. Because it says the inward fool, the inward parts of a fool, meaning their mind is like a broken vessel. It cannot hold no water. That's the problem. The water is the word of God. So you cannot pour anything into a mind of a fool. Go ahead. Verse 15. Read. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will mm -hmm. commend it. He will command. They are skillful in the word of righteousness. Guess what? When they hear the word of wisdom, they're going to add unto it. They're going to say, oh, praise to the Most High. That's right. The whole praise to the Lord. Go ahead. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, mm. it displeases him. And he casted it behind his back. That's the problem. You see, this is what fools do. Fools, as soon as here they hear the word, as soon as they, they, the one of understanding, they hear the word of the wise. Guess what? He says they get displeased by that. They despise and hate God's commandments, and they cast the word of God behind their back. That's what they do. One ear out the other. You understand? Meaning what? Fools are self-willed. They make, they what? They follow their own feelings, their own mind, their own wicked imaginations. That's what fools do. That's what the Lord is saying here. Read again verse 15. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 15. Mm -hmm. If a fool man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. They cast the word of God behind their back, meaning they, 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 they are displeased by the word of God. That's a fool right there. That's what the Lord is saying right there. But guess what? The one of understanding, here's what they will do. Sirach 636 now. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 36. Mm -hmm. If thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. You see what he's saying? If you see you see a man of understanding, they keep God's commandments, they understand what this Bible is saying. It says, You must get thee be times unto him, meaning early, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Always be asking questions to understand what this Bible is saying. What the hell going on? You must go there to ask the questions so you can receive understanding. That's what we, that's what the wise men or women will do. But a fool, as soon as they hear the word of understanding, they will cast it behind their back because they despise it. Our forefathers were not like that. Go back to 2nd Ezra now. Chapter 6, verse 32. Watch this. Read that again. Now we understand what our forefather Daniel was doing, what our forefather Ezra was doing. Watch this. How he moved, his discourse, his character. Okay, come on. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 32. Mm -hmm. For thy voice is heard before the Most High. For the mighty have seen thy righteous dealing. Come on. We have proved also thy chastity, mm. which thou hast had ever since thy youth. Which thou hast had ever since your youth. Because what were they doing in their youth? They were gathering instructions so they can get wisdom till they, they are old age. Go ahead. And therefore hath he sent me to show thee all these things mm. and to say unto thee, be of good comfort and fear not. Be of good comfort and fear not. You know what comforts us? The laws of God. Jump down to verse 35. Watch this. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after this that I wept again 
mm. and fasted seven days in like manner. Really? That I might fulfill the three weeks which he had told me. With that I might fulfill the what now? That I might fulfill the three weeks which he had told me. That I might fulfill the three weeks which he had told me. You see what our forefathers was doing? Daniel did the same thing. Ezra is doing the same thing here. Jump down now to verse 37. This is what happens when you fast, when you dedicate your soul, your spirit, your mind to the most high God. This is what the Lord does to your spirit. Verse 37. Watch this. Verse 37. For mm. my spirit was greatly set on fire, and mm. my soul was in distress. Because of the things that he now he, he was, that was expanded unto him. You understand? The deep, the breakdowns, the understanding that he's received. He says what? He says, and his soul was in distress because now he's seeing the conditions of his people. He's also seeing the end of the world. What's going to happen when the Lord returns? Those things are distressing. You understand? Those things are bad in some. Understand that. Okay. Now, go back now. Give, you know what? Give me Second Ezra chapter 5. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 5. Read verse 35 and read 30, 32 and 33. Second Ezra 5 verse 32. Then we're going to go back to Daniel. Second Ezra 5 verse 32. Watch this. Second book of Ezra chapter 5 verse 32. So what I want to show you here is our forefathers, they were, not, they were not just about themselves. They were about themselves to get their minds right to understand what the Bible is saying so they can be a benefit and an asset to their nation. Watch this. Read verse 32 now. Second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 32. Mm -hmm. And said unto me, Hear me, and I will instruct thee. Hearken to the thing that I say, and I shall tell thee more. He says, and I'm going to tell you more. This is the angel speaking. This is Uriel, the angel speaking to Ezra. Go ahead. And I said, Speak on, my Lord. Mm. Then said he unto me, Thou art so troubled in mind for Israel's sake. You see what he's saying? He says, you are so troubled in mind for Israel's sake. So he wasn't doing all this for himself. He was doing this for his people. That's why now the Lord is saying, you are so troubled in mind for Israel's sake. Go ahead. Lovest thou that people better than he that made them? You see, now the Lord is asking him, he says, do you love the, do you love the people better than the one that made them? Meaning, do you love Israel more than I do? Okay. Because Ezra was asking a lot of questions. You understand? He wanted to understand things, not just for himself only, but for the benefit of his people. Give me Daniel 9 verse 20. Daniel chapter 9 verse 20. Watch this. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 20. Go ahead. And whilst I was speaking and praying mm. and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel. You see that part right there? He says what? Read that again. Read it from the top again. Verse 20. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 20. And mm -hmm. whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel. You see that part right there? He says while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel. So he wasn't just, he wasn't about self. He was about his people. That's why it says he confessed his own personal sins to the Lord and the sins of his people Israel, that the Lord may forgive him, him for his sins, and the Lord may forgive Israel for their sins, that the Lord may give them what? Fleshly hearts so they may repent. So Daniel, our forefather, was about his nation. Our forefather, Ezra, was about his nation as well. Go ahead. And presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God, you see that thing? It says, presenting my supplication before the Lord my God. What does that mean? Give me that in Romans 10 verse 10. We're coming back. He says, presenting my supplication before the Lord my God. What does that mean? Romans 10 verse 10. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 10. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see that thing? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So when it says supplication, it means confession. That's what Daniel was saying. He was confessing his sins and the sins of his people, Israel, before the Lord his God. Go back to Daniel 9 verse 20. Okay? Because there's the word supplication is used in verse 20 when it says confessing. He's saying the same thing. Read verse 20 again. Daniel 9. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 20. 
Mm -hmm. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. For the holy mountain of my God. That holy mountain is talking about Zion. Give me that in Psalms 2 verse 6. Psalms chapter 2 verse 6. But before we get there, before we get there, give me that in Sarah 33 verse 17. Okay. Before we proceed, go to Sarah 33 verse 17. I'm going to show you the mindset of our forefathers, okay? Daniel, as an example, our forefather Esdras. Read verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 17. Come on. Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. You see that thing? It says, I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. That's the house of Israel that seek learning. Because not all Israel seeks learning. But those of Israel that seek learning, they will benefit from this. Go back to Daniel 9 verse 20. The book of Daniel, chapter 9 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, the holy mountain of his God is talking about Mount Zion. Give me that in Psalms 2 verse 6 now. And for the holy mountain of my God, what is that talking about? Let's read there. Psalms chapter 2, read verse 6. The book of Psalms chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. You see that thing? Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's the holy mountain of his God, Mount Zion. Give me Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the last days that mm -hmm. the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Go ahead. And shall be exalted before the hills, above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the last days that mm -hmm. the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Because when we had came, one brother said, you see, all nations talk about everybody. All, they're always trying to save the other nations because it says, and all nations shall flow into it. Who's the all nation? Jump up to verse one, because this is after World War II. He says, all nations shall flow into it. Who's the all nation? Read verse 1, so we understand. The book of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. You see that concerning Judah and Jerusalem. The Judah and Jerusalem is the all nations that will flow unto it. Jump down to verse 3 now. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. And mm -hmm. many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. Mm -hmm. And we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the Lord, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see that thing? It says what? Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us all his ways. And we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law. We're going to teach what in the kingdom? God's commandments. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Because at this time, Israel is gone. He's no longer on this earth. He's gone. You understand? Understand that. Okay. Now, watch this. Let's go back. Go back to Daniel 9 now. Read verse 21. Daniel 9 verse 21. Now we have a better understanding what Daniel was saying. Daniel 9 verse 21 now. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 9 verse 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While I was speaking in prayer. While I was speaking in prayer. While I was speaking in prayer. So you see, Daniel was dealing with not just one angel here. Daniel 1, he is dealing with Gabriel. When you read chapter 10, he's dealing with Michael the archangel. Some heavy stuff here. Understand that. That's why it says Daniel was a man greatly beloved by the Most High. Understand that. Read verse 21 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Yea, 
Whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, mm. being called to fly swiftly, mm. tell me about the time of the evening oblation. So when he says cause to fly swiftly, letting you know, this is not talking about a regular man. Regular men don't fly. He says, touch me about the time of the evening oblation, the time of the evening sacrifice. So while he was speaking, Daniel was praying. So that means Daniel had a what? Just like Esdras, he had a consistent prayer and fasting life. He fasted often. He prayed often. You understand? Why? Because he wanted to establish that relationship with the Most High. He kept the commandments, number one, first and foremost, he kept God's laws, he fasted consistently, he prayed consistently, you understand, to get the Father's attention. Now, give me the book of Daniel 6 verse 10, because our forefather Daniel, he had a consistent prayer life. We must accustom ourselves to that, we must elevate ourselves to that level. So our forefathers, the most High God can also deal with us, just like he dealt with our forefathers of all time. Daniel 6 verse 10, read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 10. Come on. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. You see that? So he prayed three times a day, three times a day. Come on. And gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. time. So that means that was his custom. Daniel did that thing three times a day. And he says he gave thanks before his God as he did a four times. So Daniel, he was consistent in his prayers. Now watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 55 and 17. Our forefather, King David, did the same thing. You understand? He also had a consistent prayer life. So prayer is very important. Don't take for granted the power of prayer. Okay? Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and 17. Mm -hmm. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and you shall hear my voice. You see that thing? It says evening and morning and at noon I will, will I pray and cry aloud and you shall hear my voice. The, he is the most high. So because why? Our forefather King David, he had a consistent prayer life. But because why? Listen, remember, we, are in, we were in captivity. Okay, Daniel was David, King David was during the time of war. But now in the New Testament, this is what the Lord said we must do. Give me that in First Thessalonians 5 verse 17. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17. You must never take for granted the power of prayer. Okay, and your prayers must be sincere before the Lord. Okay, read that. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 5 verse 17. Come on. Pray without ceasing. He says what? Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Meaning what? Do it as often as you possibly can because the time is at hand. But keep consistently the three times a day. In the between, he says pray without ceasing. That's what the Lord is giving us what? He's giving us a way because he's letting us know it's going to come a time where we're going to need to do what? We need to pray more than we're doing right now. Because right now, we're not praying enough. We need to pray enough. We need to pray more than enough. We need to do better than what we're doing right now. You understand? That's why I put the spirit on the apostle Paul to tell us, in the spirit, pray without ceasing. Why? Because we need to pray for vengeance. We need to pray for deliverance. We need to pray for the spirit to overcome. We need to pray for the most high to have mercy upon us. We need to pray for the most high God to give us a fleshly heart so we may repent and glorify him upon this earth before his son returns. Understand that? Give me that in Tobit 12 verse 8. Tobit chapter 12 verse 8. Because the most high God will not grant us his wisdom if we don't do what he says, as it is written in the holy book. Read that. Tobit 12 verse 8. Read. The book of Tobit chapter 12 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. You see that? A Prayer is good with fasting and arms and righteousness. So you see, prayer is good. Not only that, but you must fast. Not only that, you must give arms. Not only that, you better keep God's commandments. He's giving you four things. Prayer, fasting, arms, and righteousness. These things are important. It's not just prayer. It's not enough. Prayer alone is not enough. 
Fasting alone is not enough. Giving alms alone is not enough. Keeping God's commandments alone is not enough. You need to do all these. Not only that, but guess what? Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 9. 2nd Ezra, okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Read verse... 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Watch this. Because there's another one that we need to also... Uh, we, need to, we need to include in this. Because the prophets, they all spoke the same thing. But watch this. 2nd Ezra 9, verse 7. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby he have believed. You see that thing? You're going to escape by your works. That's the arms and the righteousness. You understand? And that's the what? That's the fasting. That's the prayer. He says what? Shall be able to escape by his works. Okay? The works goes into what? Fasting, prayer, arms, righteousness, and by faith. You see that? That's the fifth one. And by faith, whereby he believed. So you're not going to do all these four pillars that we read about. The fifth one is faith. We must have faith in the Lord. We must have faith in the sacrifice that Christ made that by his blood, we're going to overcome. If you don't have faith, but you have works, it's not enough. You understand? You need prayer. You need fasting. You need arms. You need righteousness, the keeping of God's laws and faith. Read that again, verse 7, so we understand this. Okay, come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby he have believed. You see that thing? And by faith, whereby he have believed. By faith, whereby he have believed. Because without faith, you're not going to please the Lord. Without works, you're not going to please the Lord. He need works and faith. He need both. You understand? So here in Second Ezra, he's summarizing them. He says, works and faith. The Apostle James says the same thing. Works and faith. Tobit is breaking it down for you. Understand that. Okay? So let's go back. Okay, go back to Daniel 9. Daniel chapter 9. Read verse 22 now. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. So now this is the angel Gabriel. He says, I'm now come forth to give you skill and understanding. Understand this. Your, the skills and the understanding of this Bible, you're only going to get it if the Most High God sees fit for you to receive it. And the certain things that we have to do for us to receive skill and understanding of this Bible, it is not going to fall on your lap. We must labor. We must pray. We must fast. We must give alms. We must keep God's commandments. We must have faith in the Lord. Then the Lord will give us skill. He will give us understanding. Read that again, verse 22. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 22. Pray. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding. To give you skill and understand. How do we get the skills? Give me that in Sarak 1. Sarak 1 verse 19. I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 1 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wisdom bringeth down skill and knowledge of understanding. Mm. And exalted them to honor that hold her fast. You see that thing? It says, wisdom reigneth down skill. What is this wisdom? Give me that in Job 28, 28. Job 28, verse 28. It says, wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. Okay? Job 28, 28. Let's read that. The book of Job, chapter 28, verse 28. Go ahead. And unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. You see that? The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Go ahead. And to depart from evil is understanding. And to depart from wickedness and evil is understanding. So go back to Sarah 1, verse 19 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wisdom bring it down skill and knowledge of understanding. And exalted them that and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. 
So wisdom is the fear of the Lord. You understand? It is going to give you skill of this book to understand what this Bible is saying. The skills to teach, the skills to study, the skills to put a timetable and follow it. The skills to discern spirit is a knowledge of understanding. You're going to have knowledge of understanding of this Bible. The parables, the breakdowns, the milk. You'll understand all that. Why? Because wisdom of the Lord will rain down skill. How does, it, how does the Lord bring down skill from above? you keeping God's laws. You fear the Lord. You will receive all this. Okay? How do we get understanding? Sarah 21 verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 11. We read it earlier, but let's read it again. 21, verse 11. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You see what he's saying? When you keep God's commandments, you'll receive understanding. You're not going to get understanding without the fear of the Lord. Read. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. So that means it is possible to perfect the fear of the Lord. Meaning it is, it is possible to be perfect by keeping God's commandments. Then the Lord gets, says, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you wisdom at thine own desire. You understand? Now, watch this. Let's go back. Go back to Daniel 9 now. Daniel chapter 9 verse 22. Daniel 9 verse 22. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 1, 25 and 26. Sarah chapter 1, verse 25. He says, I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding. Only the most High God is the one that sends the good angels to give us skill and understanding of this Bible. Watch this. Sarah 1 verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 verse 25. Mm -hmm. The parables of knowledge are in the churches, church, churches of wisdom. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. You see that thing? Godliness in a, is an abomination to a sinner. Meaning the one that keeps, that breaks the laws of God, they don't want to repent. Godliness will be an abomination unto them. You know what that means translates into? But a fool, as soon as one of no understanding hear it, 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 dis, it displeases them, they cast it behind their back. That's what we're reading here. Read again verse 25. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. So let's understand, what are the parables of wisdom? Is it the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. What is that? Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Let's start there. It says the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. Read. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandment to thee. You see that thing? So the words is the commandments. The words is the commandments. Okay, come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom mm. and apply thine heart to understanding. You see that thing? He's saying the same thing we read in Sirach. It says, if thou, will, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. If thou shalt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. I know some of you forgot already. Okay? Go back to Sirach 6. Go back to Sirach chapter 6. Read verse 32 again. So we understand what the prophets are saying here. Okay? Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. You see that thing? If thou shalt apply thy mind, you shall be prudent. Application of God's commandments, you're going to get wisdom. Go back, to, go back to Proverbs now. Chapter 2, verse 1. Let's understand. Because the prophets, they all said the same things. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. my son if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandment to thee go ahead so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding you see that thing you incline your ear to wisdom which is the fear of the lord and apply thy mind to understanding which is the keeping of god's commandments go ahead 
Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, mm -hmm. and lifts up thy voice for understanding. So what is he saying? What is he saying? He says you must pray. That's what we just read in Daniel 9. He says, if thou criest after knowledge, and lift up thy voice for understanding, go ahead. If thou seekest her as silver, mm. and searchest for her as for hid treasures. You see that part right there? If you seek her as silver, the hair is wisdom, and searches for her as for hid treasures. What are these hid treasures? The laws, the words, the commandments, the wisdom of the Most High God in verse 1 and 2, and verse 3 also. Watch, watch this. Next verse. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord mm. and find the knowledge of God. You see that thing? You're going to understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. But he's going to get plain now what are, what are the treasures of wisdom. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom mm. and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You see that part right there? For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh what? Knowledge and understanding. That's it right there. So guess what? The treasures of wisdom is what? God's commandments. The treasures of wisdom is what? God's laws. God's laws will give you access to the parables of knowledge. That's what Sirach is saying. Go back to Sirach 125 again. Mm -hmm. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. Uh, you see that you see why he's, he's telling you where they are located. Read that verse again. <laughs> the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. You see where he's, he's telling you where the parables of knowledge are found. They are found in the treasures of wisdom. So you're not going to get the parables of knowledge without the treasures of wisdom, which is what? The laws of God. God's laws will give you access to the parables of knowledge. He's telling you where they are found. Right there. Read the verse again, verse 25. Because I know some of you don't get it. Read again, verse 25. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 25. Read. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. Next verse. Go ahead. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. Mm. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see, if you desire wisdom, you keep the commandments. You see, the formula is straightforward. The Mosa is, not, is making, it says, if you desire wisdom, you keep the commandments and the Lord shall. Meaning, it's not going to be immediate. You're not going to get wisdom immediate. That's why it says, gather instruction from thy youth up. And you understand? And you shall get wisdom in thine old age. You see that thing right there? It says, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see, wisdom is not immediate. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, wisdom sir. is not, wisdom of the Mosaic is not immediate. That's what we're reading here. It says, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Meaning over time, when we prove our worth to receive it, the Lord sees fit to see to, for us to receive it, then the Lord said, okay, Michael, go down there. Gabriel, go down there. Uriel, go down there. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Give me Proverbs 1 and 5. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. A wise man will hear and mm. will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. You see what happens? A wise men have spiritual ears to hear. Men, wise men and women, they will hear. But the foolish men and women, they will not hear. They will reject the instruction. It says a wise man will hear. Not everybody will hear what this Bible is saying. Not everybody will understand what it says. But it says a wise man will hear and they will increase learning. That means a dumb man and women, they will not hear and they will decrease learning. They will become dumber and dumber. You see that thing? Read again verse 5, so we understand what is being said here. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Go ahead. And a man of understanding shall attain to wise counsel. Shall attain unto wise counsel. A man of understanding, they will attain wise counsels. Go ahead. 
to understand a problem and the mm. interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. You see what he's saying? So a wise man will hear, they will increase learning because their learning will increase so much so that they will be able to understand a proverb. They will understand, they will be able to interpret the proverbs, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Because why? They will hear, they will increase learning, they will, and they will, add, they will what? They will attain unto wise counsels. Once those things take place, that's why there's a call on there. It says they will understand what? A, a proverb, which is parables, illustrated stories, allegories, and the interpretation. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. The wise will understand these things. Next verse. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see, they keep repeating that over and over. You know why? Because common sense is not so common. Read again. The fear of the Lord is what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. It didn't say dislike. They said despise. It didn't say dislike. It says they despise what? They despise wisdom and instruction. Watch this. Give me Matthew 24 verse 1. Matthew chapter 24 verse 1. Let's read that. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Because they came to the disciples, they came, they were showing in Christ the temple. They are taking, they are giving him a tour of the temple. You understand? The second temple that was built and the, 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 the extras that Herod had built also. You understand? So now they are showing him, they say, listen, look at the temple. Look how beautiful the temple is. What did Christ say? Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, see ye not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another. There shall not be thrown down. So Christ is telling them, listen, you see all this, this temple that you're showing me? Even the extra stuff that Herod put together here, he says, it's all going to be burned down. It's all going to get destroyed. You understand? So what was he saying? Was he puckering them? No, he was telling them the truth, the prophecy. Listen, this was going to come down. You understand? Don't be impressed by what you see with this temple. It's all going to come crumbling down. That's what he's telling them. Watch this. Go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, mm. Tell us. When shall these things be? Mm. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end and of the end of the world. So now they are asking him privately. And he says, tell us, when shall these things be? When is the temple going to get destroyed? That's what they're asking him. Okay. Tell us, when shall these things be that you're saying in verse 1 and 2? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What is going to mark the sign of your return? Oh, praises. Okay, read that again. Read that again, verse 3. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3. Mm -hmm. and, and as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Mm. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world? And of the end of the world. Because he's telling them, listen, the temple is going to be destroyed. He says, they shall not be left here. One stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Meaning this, what you're showing me, is going to be destroyed. So what is he telling them? You understand? He's telling them, listen, the temple is going to get destroyed. So as they are asking him the question, he's going to explain to them, he's going to expound unto them the things that will happen to mark the end of the Gentile rule is what? The temple must be destroyed. What will mark the sign of his coming? Part of that is the temple is going to get destroyed. And of the end of the world, the end of the Gentile ruling upon the earth. Meaning these things must take place to mark the end of the second coming of the Messiah. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Second Ezra, because when it says the end of the world, it's talking about the end of the Gentile ruling upon this earth. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Mm. When shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? 
You see what the, the, the end is? Ezra is asking the question. What shall be the parting asunder of the times? The parting asunder of the times is talking about what? The end of the world. The end of the Gentile world. The end of the Gentile rulership upon this earth. That's what he's asking. What shall be the parting asunder of the times? The what times? The times of the Gentile rule upon this earth. Okay, read that again. Verse 7. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Mm. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followed? You see that thing? When shall be the end of the first? When it says the end of the first, it goes into the Middle Ages, okay? When we ruled during the time of the Dark Ages and the beginning of it that follows, the beginning of it that follows is the end of the Gentile rule and the beginning of Israel taking over this earth and ruling it forever. That's what he's asking. Go ahead. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, mm -hmm. Jacob planned her first the heel of Esau. Go ahead. For Esau is the end of the world. Mm. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. You see that? For Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end. Is going to be Esau will be what? The end of the Gentile ruling upon this earth. And Jacob will be the beginning of the world that follows after Esau's empire is shut down when the Lord returns. Go ahead. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. You see that thing? the hand of man is the other nations. The other nations outside of Esau, the other nations outside of Jacob. The other nations, the Chinese, the Japanese, they are just in the middle. It says the hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Go ahead. Other question, Ezra, ask thou not. You see what he's saying? So, but the point here is, Ezra is the, the angel is explaining to Ezra what will be the end of the age, what will be the parting asunder of the times, the end of the Gentile rule. That's what he's asking. Okay. So let's go back. You know what? Before you get that, before you get that, uh, give me the book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 5. Because John the Revelator said the same thing. John. John the Revelator, okay? Revelation chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 10, verse 5. Mm -hmm. As the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven. Come on. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, mm -hmm. and the earth, and the things that they in are, and the sea, and the things that they in, and the things that are they in, that and the they things, and, and the things which are they in, and the things which are they in, come on, and the things which are they in, that there should be time no longer, that they should be what, that there should be time no longer. That there should be time no longer, meaning the time of the gentle rule is over. That there should be time no longer. So the same thing that we read in Second Ezra is the same thing that we just read in Matthew chapter 24. Let's go back to Matthew 24, okay? Matthew chapter 24, read verse 3 again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Go ahead. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Mm -hmm. And what shall be the sign of their coming and of the end of the world? And of the end of the world. I mean, the end of the Gentile rule. When will be the end of the Gentile rule? So that means there must be the beginning of the Gentile ruling upon this earth. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel chapter 7. Okay. What will mark the beginning, okay, of the Gentile ruling and what will be marked the end of the Gentile rule? Give me Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 verse 1. We're going to read this quick because we, we went over this, I believe. I think we went over this before, okay? Come on. Daniel 7 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 1. 
Mm -hmm. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Read. Then wrote the dream. Then wrote he. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Go ahead. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. The four winds of the heaven is as they strove upon the great sea. These four winds goes into what? It goes into the militaries of the world, the empires, the empires that will rise. Daniel is prophesying about that. Go ahead. The four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. You said the four great beasts came upon from the sea, meaning from the nations, diverse one from another. Come on, watch this. The first was like a lion and had mm. eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And mm. as a man's heart was given to it. And a man's heart was given to it. So the first is as the first was like a lion. You understand? And had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings therefore were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made, and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it, meaning Daniel's heart was given to it because Daniel was the one that advised the Babylonian empire. So this first beat, was, which was like a lion, is the, Persian, is, the, is the Babylonian empire. Okay? Ancient Babylon. This is what Daniel is seeing here. Okay, go ahead. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. Mm -hmm. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. Mm. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Meaning what? It was going to conquer. So now the second beast that Daniel is seeing is the second empire. This is what Persia and Media, okay? You had the Media Empire, which came up first, and then you had the Persian Empire, which came up second, which was greater than the Media Empire. That's why it's called the Medo-Persia Empire, okay? Which was represented by a bear. Go ahead. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Hmm. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Because the kingdom that took over the kingdom of Persia was the Greeks, which with, with Alexander the Greek. Okay? So this is the Greek empire that has been, has been spoken of here, represented by what? A leopard. Okay? Go ahead. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful mm -hmm. and terrible. Mm. And strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, meaning a great it, military. So this fourth beast, he says, it was dreadful, it was terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, meaning great military. Go ahead. It devoured and break in pieces, mm -hmm. and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Now this goes into what? This goes into the last days now. But this beast right here that we're reading about, the fourth beast, you notice that the Lord did not reveal unto Daniel the symbol, the animal symbol of this fourth beast. Let's get it. Get that in 2nd Ezra, okay? Get 2nd Ezra chapter 12. 2nd Ezra 12. 2nd Ezra chapter 12, read verse 10. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 12 is 10. Mm -hmm. Before you get there, get 2nd Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Watch this. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Mm -hmm. I have not doubt it that remainest of the four beasts mm. whom I made to reign in my world that the end of their times might come through them. You see that thing? That the end of their times, meaning their time of rulership, their time, the time of the end of their rulership will come through them ruling in that time, which is the last day. So Ezra is prophesying about the kingdom that will come from the fourth beast. Hold this. Second Ezra 12 verse 10 now. We're coming back here. 
Second Ezra chapter 12, verse 10, so we understand what's going on here. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he said, unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. Go ahead. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. Go ahead. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore now I declare it unto thee. So now you see he's giving us what he's giving us here. The, symbol, the animal symbol of the fourth beast, which was not given to Daniel. Now it's been given to Esther. Okay, come on. Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon earth and mm -hmm. it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. You see that thing? It says the days come, meaning in the last days, there's going to come a kingdom that shall be feared. It will rise up a kingdom upon earth. And it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 14. In the same shall 12 kings reign, one after another. These 12 kings is the 12 feathers, which is the 12 Roman Caesars. Okay. This is talking for another day. Go back. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 39. Second book of Ezra chapter 11, verse 39. So now, you know what? Mm, before we get there, what we just read here, Daniel, I mean, Esdras was given the symbol of the fourth beast, which is the eagle. Okay? Daniel was, Esdras was given the symbol of the fourth beast, which is the eagle, which was not expounded unto Daniel, our forefather. Second Esdras chapter 11 is prophesying about the kingdom that will come from off from the fourth beast. So second Esdras chapter 11 verse 39 now. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? You see that, that the end of the Gentile rule will come through them. Because during the time of Rome, which is what Daniel was, was being explained to, but the symbol of the animal symbol was not given unto him, but was given to Esdras, is going into Rome. You understand? Is going into Rome, the Roman Empire. But here you notice the way that the Lord is expounding to Esdras, he's wearing it differently. Read verse 39 again so I can show you what's going on here. Read that again, verse 39. Second book of Esdras, chapter 11, verse 39. Read. Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? You see that thing? Are you not the one that remaineth of the four beasts? So meaning what? The empire that will come from the fourth beast. You understand? That's what he's going into here. Go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. Whom I made to reign in my world. Because remember, it says, Behold, the days come that they shall rise a kin up a kingdom upon earth, and it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. Go ahead. That the end of their times might come through them. That the end of their times will, might come through them. Meaning the end of the Gentile rule will come through them. That's the same thing we read in 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 7 through 9. Go ahead. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past. Mm. And had power over the world with great fearfulness. And over the whole compass of the earth with much mm. wicked oppression. Go ahead. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. Dwell he upon the earth with deceit. Okay. So this goes into Babylon the Great. Okay. Now let's go back. Okay. Let's go back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 7, verse 7 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. Mm. And it had great iron teeth, it devoured and break in peace, and stamped the residue of, with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, when it says it had ten horns, it's Daniel is prophesying about the European Union. You understand? Whom America will come from, they, they will come from Britain. You understand? So that's going into 
the last days now, talk about what's happening right now. But what I'm showing you is, I'm showing you what, Daniel, what, the, what Christ is about to explain in Matthew chapter 24. Let's go back there now. Now we, we read about four empires, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and what? And the beast that will come from the fourth beast in these last days. And it had 10 horns, okay? So that goes into the EU and the Americas and all that. Now, go back to Matthew 24. Like I said, I did go over this before. So tonight, today, I'm not going over it. I'm just showing you so I can expound unto you what Christ is about to explain to us. Okay? Go back to Matthew 24. Read verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So now, the beginning of the Gentile rule is started with Babylon. You understand? Then Persia. Then Greece. Then Rome. You understand? And the end of their times will come through the, end the empire that will come off from the fourth beast. An extension of the fourth beast, which is the United States of America. Okay, jump down to verse 15 now. Watch this. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Read that again, verse 15. For of Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Come on. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So let's understand what the Christ is talking about here. He says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, meaning the temple, whoso readeth, let him understand. What is Christ talking about here? What is he talking about? Let's go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Daniel 9, verse 26. Because Christ is letting us know, go and read the book of Daniel to understand who is the abomination of desolation. Read that. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Let's get into it. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26. Read. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Mm -hmm. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Desolations are determined. Desolations are determined. So read that again, verse 26, so we understand. Because now Daniel is giving some time frames here. Okay, read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. But not for himself. Stop and the right people there. of the... He says, after three score and two weeks, a score is 20, three score is 60. It says, after three score and two weeks, meaning what? 62 weeks, after 62 weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Okay? So let's understand what's going on here. Okay? It says, after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Messiah is talking about Christ, okay? Let's understand here. Give me that in Numbers, okay, chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Let's understand the count here. What's going on? Numbers chapter 13, read verse 34. Numbers 1434, 1434. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 34. Go ahead. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year shall you mm -hmm. bear your iniquities. Even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. You see what he's saying? He says, what? After the number of the days in which he searched the land. He says, even what? <clears throat> Excuse me. 40 days. Each day for a year. So each day was equivalent to what? To a year. Okay? He says, you shall bear your iniquities. Give me that in Genesis. Okay? Give me the book of Genesis, chapter 29, verse 27. This is when our forefather Jacob 
was saving for his wives. Okay? Watch this. The book of Genesis, chapter 29, verse 27. Go ahead. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. You see what he's saying? He says, fulfill her week. A week is how many days? Seven days. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou hast served with me yet seven other years. You see that thing? Go ahead, watch this. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. He did what? And, he did, and Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. You see, and Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, okay? And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. So you see what we are reading here? It says, fulfill her week. That week was what? The seven other years. You see that thing? Each day for a year. So the day represent what? One year. It represented one year, which is by sevens, which is the number of completion. So now, go back to Daniel 9 now. Verse 26. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. You see that? It says after three score and two weeks. So that's 62 weeks. 62 weeks times what? Times seven. How much is that? 434, sir. 434 years. So this translates into 434 years. Hold this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra 728. We're coming back here. 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 28. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 7, verse 28. Go ahead. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. The 12, come on. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. It says, they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Within 400 years, meaning 400 years from the time of the Persian Empire to, to Rome. Is what? Is approximately 400 years plus. Go ahead. After these years shall my son Christ die. You see that thing? Shall Messiah be cut off? Come on. And all men that have life. And all men that have life. Give me that in Revelation 11, 11. We're coming back. Shall Messiah be cut off and all men that have life. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Mm-hmm. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. You read that again, verse 11. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. You see that thing? The spirit of life, the spirit what? It says, the spirit of life from God entered into them. The spirit of life from God. The spirit of life from God entered into them that them is who judah and israel come on and they stood upon their feet mm -hmm. and great fear fell upon them which saw them and great fear fell upon them which saw them in the other nation when see israel wake up the fear will fall upon them that's why it says go back to second Ezra 7 verse 29 again second book of Ezra, chapter 7 verse 29 go ahead after these years shall my son Christ die, mm. and all men that have life. And all men that have life, because the spirit of life, the spirit of life from God entered into us, and we stood upon our feet. Go back to Daniel now, chapter 9, verse 26 again. Book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26. Read. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. You see that thing, Christ, my son Christ, he says what? And then after, after these years, meaning 400 years, within 400 years shall my son Christ die and all men that have life. That's what we're reading here. 
After three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Messiah, that's Christ our Lord and Savior. Give me that in John chapter 1 verse 41. John chapter 1 verse 41. You know, brothers just be arguing down, arguing, saying, no, but when you say Christ is wrong, what the hell is this? You know, our, our people, they hate God's laws. They just choose an argument for no reason. Né? Read that. John 1 41. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 41. Go ahead. He first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. You see that thing? The Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. The anointed, okay? So give me that in John chapter 11, verse 49. Because remember, it says what? Shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself? Meaning Christ is going to be crucified for the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's get that. John chapter 11, verse 49. Read that. The book of John chapter 11, verse 49. Go ahead. And one of them, named Paphos, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Come on. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. Mm -hmm. And that the whole nation perish not. That the whole nation perish not. You see what he's saying? He says that one man should die for the people. That the whole nation perish not. Meaning the whole nation perish not. That goes into what? Israel. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. And this spake he not of himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. That Jesus Christ should die for that nation. Which nation? The Jews. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Watch this. Go ahead. And not for that nation only. Not for Judah, Benjamin, and Levi only. The southern kingdom of Israel. Come on. But that also he should gather together in one, the children mm -hmm. of God, that was scattered abroad. You see that thing? But that he should what? He should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Who are the children of God that were scattered abroad? Give me James 1 and 1 now. Let's understand. Okay? Not, he's not going to die for that nation only. No. But he's also going to die for the children of God that are scattered abroad. Who are those children of God that are scattered abroad? Get that in James 1 and 1. Come on. The book of James of the 1 with 1. Read. James. A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ mm. to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Read. You see that thing? To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So the children of God that are scattered abroad is the 12 tribes of Israel, northern kingdom of Israel. And now as a nation, all Israel is scattered abroad all over the earth and the four corners of the world. Understand that thing. Okay. Now, go back now. Go back to Daniel chapter 9. Read verse 26 again. You know what? Before we get there, give me Isaiah 53 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. He's not just going to die for himself, but he's also going to die for the 12 tribes of Islam. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The, chast the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You see that thing? So Christ was the one that was what? He was wounded for our transgressions. That's when he was going to be cut off. So Isaiah's prophesying here of the Messiah being cut off, meaning being crucified for what? For our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10. Come on. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm -hmm. He has put him to grief. Pray. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. You see that thing? When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. An offering for sin. Come on. He shall see his seed. His people. Come on. He shall prolong his days. He's going to live forever, sitting on the right hand of the majesty on high. Come on. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Read. 
He shall see of the travail of his soul mm -hmm. and shall be satisfied. The most that God will be satisfied with Christ's sacrifice. Come on. By his, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Justify many will justify many of the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. For he shall bear their iniquity. He will bear our iniquities. That's what Isaiah is prophesying about. Okay. Isaiah is prophesying about Messiah coming and die for the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me Matthew chapter 1 verse 17. Watch this. Matthew chapter 1 verse 17. We're explaining when Messiah will be cut off. Okay. Within 62 weeks. Watch this. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 17. Mm -hmm. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until they're carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. Great. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. You notice this. It says, you see what? You see that? It says, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So from Babylon unto Christ, you had what? You had Babylon, you had Persia. You understand? Which is what we're reading in 2nd Esdras. You understand? From Babylon unto Persia, unto Greece and Rome. So from the time of the Persian Empire unto the time of Dan, uh, unto the time of Christ is what 400 plus years. So that's what we're reading in Second Esdras. Okay, read that again, verse 17. The book of Matthew, chapter one, verse 17. Mm -hmm. So all the generations of Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon and to Christ are 14 generations. Jump down to verse 21 now. Let's see why this is significant. And he says, from Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Read verse 21. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. Read. And she shall bring forth a son, and mm. thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see that thing? So because we need a savior, he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? So go back now to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel 9 verse 26. One more again. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 26. Go ahead. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not mm -hmm. for himself. But not for himself, but for the 12 tribes of Israel. We'll go ahead. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Mm. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Desolations are determined. He says, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay, so read that again, verse 26 for me. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26. Read. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, mm -hmm. but not for himself. Read. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Stop right there. It says, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So after Christ would die for the 12 tribes of Israel, guess what would happen later on? He says, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The people of the prince. We're going to explain that in a second. Keep going. And the end thereof shall be with the mm -hmm. flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. He says, he says, unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Desolations are determined. The abomination that shall make desolate are determined. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Mm -hmm. He says he shall what? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The many here, hold this. Give me that in Luke chapter 1. Okay. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. 
So we have another week that has been added here, okay? Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, read verse 15. Watch this. Luke chapter 1, verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall mm -hmm. drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Talk about John the Baptist. Come on. Watch this. And many of the children of Israel shall, shall he turn to the Lord their God. Read that again, verse 16. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 16. Read. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And many of the children of Israel, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. So go back to Daniel 9, verse 27 now. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The many is talk about Israel. He says, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That means what? The people of the prince that shall come to destroy the city and the sanctuary, they will give Israel, they will give us an extra time for us to continue doing the sacrifices before the temple is completely destroyed in 70 AD. That's what this is going into. Go ahead. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to see. You see that thing? So it says, in the midst of that week, meaning in the midst of that extra time that he gave us, you understand? One week, you understand? Each day for a year, that's 49 years, okay? So within those 49 years, which is that one week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, meaning it's going to come a time where we are no longer low. Rome, Rome said to us, no more sacrifices. You got to stop the sacrifices. We don't want to see nothing taking place no more when it comes to the temple and the sacrifices, which was what? The beginning of those desolations that are determined. Go ahead. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. You see that thing? And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Okay? The abomination that shall be made desolate. Go ahead. Even until the consummation. Mm, the consummation of the temple and the people of the temple, read. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And that which is determined shall be poured upon the desolate. You understand? The abomination that shall make desolate. Now watch this. Now, give me, give me the book of, jump up to verse 25, okay? Daniel 9, verse 25. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. So this goes back into the time of Persia with Nehemiah and Zerubbabel building the temple. It says what? Um, it says, unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's, 60, that's 69 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay? So the wall will be the, the wall and the city will be built, which will be the second temple. Okay? And then from that time, it's going to be what? It's going to be 69 weeks until the time of what? Until the time of Rome, until the time of Christ. And then we're going to be given an extra one week to continue to do the sacrifices until the time when the Lord, the, the, the Romans will say enough, which will be how many weeks? 69 weeks times that by seven, which will be 70 weeks, by the way, 70 weeks. I get it 60, 69 weeks which is seven weeks plus three score and two weeks and one week in verse 27 to make 70 weeks. So multiply that by seven. 490, sir. 490 years. 490 years. Remember it says within 400 years. Okay. Read verse 25 again. The book of Daniel chapter 9 verse 25. Go ahead. Now therefore, and know therefore and understand Mm -hmm. That from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem and to the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks. 
and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. So when he says the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times, Give me that in the book of Nehemiah real quick, okay? Because I'm going to do part two of the abomination of desolation. There's a lot of history here. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah chapter four. Nehemiah four verse six. Watch this. The book of Nehemiah chapter four verse six. Go ahead. So put we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. Mm -hmm. For the people had a mind to work. For the people had the mind to work. He says, they built the wall and the wall was joined together because the people had the mind to work. Come on. But it came to pass that when Sanpalat and Tobiah and the, and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Astrodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made, were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wrong. That's why it says, even in travelers' times, even in travelers' times. So when we were building the wall, you understand, when Nehemiah and the brothers, when we we're building the temple with Zerubbabel and them, guess what? We had much trouble when we were building. Understand that the same thing that happened back then is happening today in a spiritual sense. Go ahead. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. You see that thing? To come to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Jump down to verse 11. Come on. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And all our adversaries said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work, the work to see. And cause the work to stop. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will, be, um, they will be upon you. So the, what were they doing? They were threatening us. That's why we had a spear in one hand and we're building on the other hand. That means they were physically fighting with us when we're building the walls of Jerusalem. So it is today. You understand? He's going to get to that place. Read verse 13. Come on. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, mm -hmm. and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Read. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and Come on. fight for your brethren. Your sons mm -hmm. and your daughters, your wives and your houses. You see what he's saying? He says, fight. You must fight for the rebuilding of our nation. So, so same it is today. We're going to build. We're going to fight. We're not going to give up, nor give in. The mission is a go. Understand that thing. So we're not going to be intimidated, nor be dismayed by these nations. The most High God is with us. Understand that thing. I just wanted to show you what Daniel was talking about. Go back to Daniel 9 verse 25. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 25. Come on. Know therefore and understand that mm -hmm. from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and mm -hmm. three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Even in troublous time. Now come on, read verse 26 now. Read. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Mm -hmm. Christ will but be crucified, come on. Not for himself, but for the 12 tribes of Israel, come on. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The people of the prince that shall come, that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, is talk about who? Give me that in Matthew 22 verse 7. Let's understand. Who is the people of the prince that shall come and that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary? Watch this. Matthew chapter 22, verse 7. The people of the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 7. Go ahead. But when the king heard thereof, he was, very, he was wroth. Mm -hmm. And he sent forth his armies 
and destroyed mm. those murderers and burned up their city. Read that again, verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. He, sent, he says what? And when the king was heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Give me Psalms chapter 17, verse 13. Psalm 17, verse 13. Okay. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked which is thy soul. You see that thing? It says, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy soul. So who is the wicked, which, which the Lord, the, the armies that the Lord sent, who is he talking about? He's talking about the people of the prince. That's the wicked that the Lord sent. That's his armies that he sent. To what? To kill the murderers, to destroy those murderers, and to burn up their cities. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 21, verse 20. No, no, before we get that, before we get that, go back to Daniel 9. Go back to Daniel 9. I'm, I'm getting to that. Daniel chapter 9. Read verse 26 again and 27. The book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Read. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah mm. be cut off, but not for himself. Read. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Come on. And the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And to the end of the war, when Jerusalem is destroyed, 70 AD, is as desolations are determined. These desolations that are determined, we're going to read about them in a few some things. Go ahead. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. An extra one week for us to continue to do the sacrifices, which is the 70th week. Go ahead. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Read. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Read. Even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Watch this. Now, look, give me Luke 21 verse 20. Let's understand who are the people of the prince that shall come and to destroy the sanctuary and the city and the sanctuary. You understand? Which will give us an extra time for us to sacrifice until that we could no longer sacrifice no more. Why? Because of what we're about to read. Luke 21 verse 20. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 21 verse 20. Come on. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, compassed then with what? Know. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, Compassed with armies, the same armies that we read in Matthew chapter 22, verse 7. He sent forth his armies to destroy the murderers and bend up their city. When you shall see the what Jerusalem compassed with armies, the people of the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, that's the armies is making reference to here. Go ahead. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then know that the what? Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. They know that the desolation, the abomination that make it desolate is nigh. You see what Christ is, is quoting? Christ is quoting Daniel. The abomination that shall make desolate is nigh. Read again verse 20. The book of Luke chapter 21 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, Read. then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. The abomination that make it desolate is nigh, which is the army, which is the people of the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. You, say, you see that? Let those Israelites that are in Judea, they must run deeper into the continent of Africa and hide. Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Those that are in the midst of it, they must depart out. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter the into. Nobody must return back. That's what he's telling them. He's prophesying. Okay. Because that's what Daniel prophesied about. 
So he's repeating the prophecy that Daniel was talking about. Come on. For these be the days of vengeance. You see that thing? For these be the days of vengeance. You understand? He says what? Read that part again. For these be the what? For these be the days of vengeance. For these be the days of vengeance, meaning desolations are determined. You understand? It says, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. The abomination that shall make desolate. Read that apart again. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 21 verse 22. Read. For these be the days of vengeance. Mm -hmm. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. You see that thing? That all things which are written may be fulfilled. The abomination that maketh desolate. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. Let's get that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 now. Verse 49. Because Moses prophesied about this thing. Okay, let's get some details. Deuteronomy 28 verse 49. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49. Go ahead. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You see that thing? That, that's what we just read, Muslim. Go back to 2 Ezra chapter 12, verse 10. Because I know some of you forgot already. 12, verse 10 and 11. 2 Ezra chapter 12, verse 10. Because it's telling you here, it says, And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Read that. 2 Ezra 12, verse 10. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 12, verse 10. Read. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. Mm -hmm. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. You see that thing? The fourth beast, which the symbol was not expanded to Daniel, but it was given to Ezra, which is the symbol of the eagle. You understand? The one that will have great iron teeth. You understand? Great military. Yeah, the Roman Empire. That's what we're reading about here. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 verse 49 now. Now we have a better understanding of what Daniel was saying, what Ezra was saying, what Moses is talking about. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49. Go ahead. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from mm. the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So Moses is prophesying about the Roman Empire. He's talking about the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. That's what he's prophesying about here. He says, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because what did they speak? They spoke Latin. They spoke Latin. The proof of that is, give me that in John chapter 19. Watch this. John chapter 19 verse 20. Start of verse 19. John 19 verse 19. This one they were, they were crucifying the Messiah. Watch this. John 19 verse 19. The book of John chapter 19 verse 19. Come on. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Read. This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. Mm -hmm. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. You see that thing? It was written in Hebrew because that's the language we spoke. It was written in Greek because remember, before the Romans took over, who took over the Persian Empire? The Greeks under Alexander the Greek. And Latin, which was during the time of the Greco-Roman Empire, which was during the time of Rome. What language did they speak? They spoke Latin. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. Read verse 49 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. They spoke Latin. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance, mm. which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Remember what the Lord said to our forefathers. It says, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. 
The abomination that make it desolate is nigh. So those that are in Judea flee to the mountains because those that did not flee, what happened to them? Read verse 50 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 50. Mm -hmm. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. They didn't care about our forefathers, the grandfathers, grandparents and all that. No, they didn't give a damn about the kids also. They were killing. Okay, go ahead. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit mm. of thy land and shall really? be destroyed. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Because what did they do? They made sure that they were starving us out. They were blocking all manner of food coming in and out of the city. Because there was a siege of Jerusalem, a seven-year siege, where they made sure that, guess what? We did not get the fruit of our cattle, the fruit of our land, you understand, until we were destroyed. They blocked the oil, the corn, the wine, and the increase of our kind, the flocks of our sheep, until we were destroyed in the siege. Go ahead. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Because guess what? Remember, it says, those that are, it says what? It says, um, I'm paraphrasing it now. It says, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, they know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That's what we're reading here. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, compassed with armies. Go ahead. Until thy high and fenced walls come down. You see that thing? They were going to destroy the walls of Jerusalem so they can enter into the city and kill and destroy and murder and rob us. Go ahead. Wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. Mm -hmm. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. That's 70 AD. Come on. Read. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. You see that? You're going to start to eat our own children. Cannibalism. We resorted to cannibalism because now you don't eat. There's no food. There's no water. Guess what? You become, you start to get crazy. Literally, you start to become crazy. Delirium. That's what they call it. Go ahead. Madness. Vexation of spirit. Come on. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, mm. which the Lord thy God has given thee, in the siege and in the straightness wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. The, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's them. Is as way in thine enemies shall distress thee. Go ahead. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother mm. and toward the wife of his bosom. And to the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. You see that thing? So we started to eat our own children. Because of what? Because of the hunger. Because the thing is, remember, they sent, there was the army. They made sure that they starve us, they're starving us out. Now the people cannot fight. You understand? They starved us out. We started to eat our own children. And then they invaded us physically. They started to breach the walls. They started to climb the walls to destroy us. To throw our children off the cliffs, off the walls. You understand? To dash our little ones against the stones. That's what they was doing. Okay, go ahead. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat. Mm -hmm. Because he has nothing left of him in the siege. And Great. in the straightening. Wherein thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Your enemies, our enemies meaning what? The people of the prince. You understand? That's the Roman Empire. What did they do? He says they distressed us in all our gates. Go ahead. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom mm. and toward her son and toward her daughter. You see that thing? That's what, what, that, this is what was going on. You really need to imagine what was taking place during the time of 70 AD. Eh? There was a lot of atrocities that was taking place. Eating your own children, boiling them and eating them. You understand? Cannibalism. No food, no water. You understand? 
And they were not stopping because the most said God was like, it's time now for y'all to stop. It's time for all this madness to stop you going into slavery. You understand? So those of our forefathers that remained, they got put to death. Many of them, they died. Understand that? Okay, come on. And toward her young one that came out from between her feet, mm -hmm. and toward her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things, secretly in the siege and straightness, mm. wherein thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. That's the, that, that, that's the desolation. That was the, this is the desolation that was determined. You understand? This is the desolation that was determined when we read in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. You understand? Because be, these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Desolations are determined. The abomination that will make desolate. Okay? That's what we're reading here. Now, watch this. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay? Let's understand. The, let's go into the history of the people of the prince that shall come. Okay? The people of the prince that shall come. Let me share my screen real quick. One second. Okay. Right. Okay. I want you to read that. It's in, we are reading from Britannica.com. We're going to read the siege of Jerusalem. Okay. Read that. Reading from Britannica.com. Mm -hmm. Siege of Jerusalem. Jewish-Roman War. 70 CE. When, when it says 70 CE, is uh, is actually 70 AD, but Esau changed it to mean common era instead of the year of our Lord. Okay, go ahead. Siege of Jerusalem, 70 CE. Roman military, Roman military blockade of Jerusalem during the first Jewish revolt. Mm -hmm. The fall of the city marked the effective conclusion of a four-year campaign against the Jewish insurgency in Judea. So it's basically, it's actually was a seven year siege, okay? So when it says the first Jewish revolt, remember, there are those of our forefathers that said, we're gonna fight. We're gonna stand here, we're gonna stay behind. We're gonna fight the Roman empire. And men, they did not win, they lost. Many of them, were, they died, they were killed. Okay, come on. The Romans destroyed much of the city, including the second temple. Mm -hmm. The majority of information on the siege comes from the copious notes of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus. Flavius Josephus was a black man. You understand? He was a traitor. At first he was fine. Eventually he decided to play both sides and he was what? He became a spy. So what was he doing? He was fighting with the Romans and he changed his name to Flavius Josephus. Okay. Let's read that. The context now. Come on. Context. In 63 BCE, Roman General Pompey captured Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The Romans ruled through a local client king and largely allowed free religious practice in Judea. Read. At times, the divide between monothe monotheistic and polytheistic Religion, religious views caused clashes between Jews and Gentiles. So now it says monotheistic goes into the worship of one God, polytheistic goes into animalistic worshipping of these idols and spirits and air and water and all that stuff. Go ahead. This friction combined with oppressive taxation and unwanted imperialism culminated in 66 CE in the first Jewish revolt. Read. The revolt was successful at first. Jewish forces quickly expelled the Romans from Jerusalem. And a revolutionary government was formed that extended its influence into the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. In response... It, the when Roman it says... Emperor, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. You see that part when it says Jewish forces quickly expelled the Romans from Jerusalem and a revolutionary government was formed that extended its influence into the surrounding area. Remember what we read in Luke, it says, and those that are in the, in, in the countries enter there into. So that's what he's talking about here when he says, um, and a revolutionary government was formed that extended its influence into the surrounding area. Okay, come on. In response, 
the Roman Emperor Nero sent the general Vespasian to meet the Jewish forces. Mm. An endeavor that pushed the majority of the rebels into Jerusalem by the time Vespasian was proclaimed emperor in 69 CE. So you had Titus and Vespasian. So Titus and his father Vespasian. So you had father and son. Vespasian and his son Titus. That's the people of the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's why I didn't mention them by name. Now I'm mentioning them because we're reading the history about the people of the prince that shall come. Okay, go ahead. Read. The fall of Jerusalem. There we go. Come on. In April 70 CE, about the time of Passover, mm. the Roman general Titus besieged Jerusalem. You see that thing? So the, Titus was a Roman general. He besieged Jerusalem about the time of the Passover. You cannot make this up. Go ahead. Since that action coincided with Passover, the Romans allowed pilgrims to enter the city but refused to let them leave. You see that thing? The pilgrims is talking about us because it's the time of the Passover and we return back to to Jerusalem, ignoring the prophecy that was said to us by Christ. Hold this. Go back to Luke 21 verse 20. Because we read about that. Our forefathers still went back to Jerusalem despite the prophecy. Okay? Luke 21 verse 20. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 21 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Go ahead. Let them, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. He says, run. They, run to the mountains. Meaning leave Jerusalem. Don't be in Jerusalem during that time. So that means you cannot leave in 70 AD. You must leave way before that because you understand this is Bible prophecy. It's not, gonna, it's not happening at that time when he said it, but it was going to happen sometime in the future. Meaning prepare yourself to leave before that time takes place. That's what we're reading here. It says, flee to the mountains. Okay, come on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let them which are in the midst of Jerusalem must depart out. But what we're reading here says, it says, since that action coincided with Passover, the Romans allowed pilgrims to enter the city but refused to let them go. Who were the pilgrims? Us. The Israelites. We wanted to go back to observe the feast of the Passover despite the prophecy. Go ahead. Let not them that are in the countries enter the into. You see what he's saying? He says, and let not them that are in the countries enter the into. Remember when there was a Jew, that, that revolt that happened? There are those that were in the surrounding areas. You understand? They returned back. Despite that prophecy because they wanted to observe the Passover in Jerusalem. Because we could observe the Passover wherever we were. We didn't have to be there because the temple, the, the oblation were caused to cease anyway. We could no longer sacrifice no more. So there was no need for us to go back to Jerusalem to want to observe the feast. The hell is this? So go back to the article. Since that action coincided with Passover, the Romans mm. allowed pilgrims to enter the city but refused to let them leave. Read. Thus strategically depleting food and water supplies within Jerusalem. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28, what Moses was prophesying about. Okay, come on. Within the walls, the zealots, a militant anti-Roman party, struggled mm. with other Jewish factions that had emerged, which weakened the resistance even more. You see that thing? So you had Israelites forming groups that say it's a militant anti-Roman party. So they were using politics, you understand? Military politics to do what? To go against Rome. Craziness. Okay, go ahead. Josephus, a Jew which had commanded rebel forces, but then defected to the Roman cause. You see that thing? Think... He defected to... This, this sellout, he defected to the Roman cause. He says, who had commanded the rebel forces, but then defected to the Roman cause. He started to side with the Romans. Read. Attempted to negotiate a settlement. 
But because he was not trusted by the Romans and was despised by the rebels, the he was despised by the Jews, meaning we hated him because of what he was doing. He hated his own people. Go ahead. He was a traitor. Read. The Romans encircled the city with a wall to cut off supplies to the city completely and thereby drive the Jews to starvation. You see that thing? Famine. Famine. That's what we're reading here. Famine. And guess what? It's going to it happen back then. It's going to happen again in these last days. So don't sleep. Okay, come on. By August 70 CE, the Romans had breached the final defenses and massacred much of the remaining population. Of Israel. Go ahead. They also destroyed the second temple. The Western Wall, the only extant trace of the second temple, remains a site of prayer and pilgrimage. Because that's talk about the Wailing Wall. That's not part of the that, that's not part of the second temple that we built. That's the called the Fort Antonia Wall, which Herod built. That's not what we built. Christ said, there shall not be any stone that shall not be left destroyed here. Everything going to be destroyed. So the wall that you see in Jerusalem today, in Israel, where you see those bastards that be bowing down to the wall, putting little papers on that wall, that's not the part of the temple that we built. It's what the Romans built by Herod. Okay, read. The loss of the temple for a second time is mourned by Jews. During the fast it's still, of Pas it says it's still mourned. It says the loss of the temple for a second time is still mourned by Jews during the fast of Tisha Be'av. Rome celebrated the fall of Jerusalem by erecting the triumphal ark of Tyrus in honor of him destroying our temple. Okay, Tyrus, the Roman emperor. Okay, read that, Tyrus in full. Tyrus in full, Tyrus Vesp Vespasian. Vespasianus Augustus. You see, Tyrus in full. Tyrus Vespasianus Augustus, okay? Original name, Tyrus Flavius Vespasianus. Mm, Born that's December it on that. 30. Yeah, that's it on that. Roman Emperor, read that part. Roman Emperor from 79 to 81. See, and the meaning AD. Of 79 to 81 AD. Okay, come on. And the what? And the conqueror of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Mm -hmm. Now let's go down. You see them? That's the, we see that part right there. When they are now, they took the, the, the menorah out of the temple. You see them? Yes, sir. That's them right there. That's what you are looking at right there. This is them. They are carrying the menorah. Letting you know that the menorah was not something you can carry by yourself. Or carry by hand. It took men to carry the menorah out. They even made a what? They made a stone relief to show what they've done to us when they destroyed our temple. Look at that. And they, they stole our possessions in the temple. You see that? That's the menorah right there. Okay. Read that. After service. After service in Britain and Germany, Titus commanded a legion under his father, Vespasian, in Judea. Mm. 67 AD. Go ahead. Following the emperor Nero's death in June 68 AD, Titus was energetic in promoting his father's candidacy for the imperial crown. You see that thing? Because they were busy wanting to elect and to push the rule and the overthrow and the conquering of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Licinius Mucianus legate of Syria, whom he reconciled with Vespasian, considered that one of Vespasian's greatest assets was to have so promising a son and heir. Mm, go ahead. Immediately on being proclaimed emperor in 69 AD, Vespasian gave Titus charge of the Jewish war. Mm. And a large-scale campaign in 70 AD culminated in the capture and destruction of Jerusalem in September. Read. The Ark of Titus, 81 AD, still standing at the entrance to the Roman Forum, commemorated his victory. The Ark of Titus. You know what the Ark of Titus is? Let's scroll back. Let's scroll down. That's the Ark of Titus. 
You see that stone relief right there? That right there is the Ark of Tyrus when they destroyed our temple in 70 AD. That's the Ark of Tyrus right there. That's what you're looking at. The Ark of Tyrus. These demons, but it was part of the prophecy. Okay? Read that. Victorious troops. Mm, let me see. Let me see if I want to read that. Okay, you see that western wall and all that? We didn't build this. This was built and fortified by Herod. This is not part of the temple. Okay, so don't be fooled, brothers, when you see all this. This is what you're looking at here. This is not our temple. Get that in Matthew 24, verse 1 again, so we understand. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 1. Go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his, and his disciples came to him for, for to show him the buildings of the temple. Read. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. You see what he's telling them? There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So that temple that was looking looking at that's not what we built because christ prophesying that they shall not be here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down so what you are seeing is what herod built the fort antonia wall which is called the wailing wall where they dove in at the wall you understand they be doing this hip movement at the wall the siege of jerusalem read that in wikipedia we're just gonna read a few of it the siege of jerusalem 70 ce or ad come on Reading from wikipedia.org, Siege of Jerusalem, 70 CE. The Siege of Jerusalem of 70 CE was the decisive event of the first Jewish-Roman War, 66 mm -hmm. to 73 CE, in Go which ahead. the Roman army, led by future Emperor Titus, besieged Jerusalem. The center of Jewish rebel resistance in the Roman province of Judea. You see that thing? That's the same place where that Christ was prophesying about. Go ahead. Following a brutal five-month siege, the Romans destroyed the city and the second Jewish temple. Mm -hmm. You see, that's it right there. That's what you're seeing here. Okay, that's what you saw on the banner as well. Let's go down. Read that. According to Josephus, that's sellout. According to Josephus, 1.1 million non-combatants died in jerusalem non-combatants the non-combatants is those that did not flee to the mountains to hide one over it says what 1.1 is is over one point is over 1.1 million jews they died in jerusalem go ahead mainly as a result of the violence and famine you see that violence and famine go ahead but this number exceeds the entire pre-siege population of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Many of the casualties were observant Jews from across the world, such as Babylon and Egypt, who had traveled to Jerusalem wanting to celebrate the yearly Passover, but instead got trapped in the chaotic siege. Why did they go back? The Lord told them, listen, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation thereof is not. They ignore the prophecy. The same way our people today will ignore the prophecy that the famine is coming. They'll just ignore it. And when the famine hits, there are going to be a lot of casualties. Understand that. Okay. But our people still don't listen. Okay, go ahead. He also writes that 97,000 were enslaved. Hmm. Matthew White, the great big book of horrible things. Not we need to get that book. We need to get that book. The great big book of horrible things. Okay. Go ahead. In page 52, estimates the combined death toll for hmm. the first and third Roman Jewish wars as being approximately 350,000. So the death toll. So the people that... Many of our people that they were they taken out of the, the they killed and they threw out of the city and those that were still in the city and all that. But this number is still small because we're many of us. Okay. There's just being generous here with the numbers. Go ahead. You know how Esau is. Read. In April 70 CE, three days before Passover, 
the Roman army started besieging Jerusalem. Mm. The city had been taken over by several rebel, rebel factions following a period of massive unrest. There was a and civil unrest. Go ahead. And the collapse of a short-lived provisional government. Mm -hmm. Read. Within three weeks, the Roman army broke the first two walls of the city. But a stubborn rebel standoff prevented them from penetrating the thickest and third wall. Read. According to Josephus, a contemporary historian and the main source for the war, the city was ravaged by murder, famine, and cannibalism. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 49 down. That's the same thing that we read. Is that the city was ravaged by murder, famine, and cannibalism. Okay? That's what we read. Okay, read on. Start, at, start um, where, where it says, yeah, yeah, keep reading. On Tisha Piav, 70 CE, August 30, Roman forces finally overwhelmed the defenders and set fire to the temple. You see that thing? He said they set fire to the temple. Roman forces finally overwhelmed the defenders and set fire to the temple. That's what we read in Matthew 22, verse 7, when it says he will send forth his armies, destroy the murderers, and set their city on fire. Go ahead. Resistance continued for another month, but eventually the upper and lower parts of the city were taken as well. Read. And the city was born, was burned to the ground. The city was burned to the ground. Come on. Tyre spread only the three towers of the, Hero of the Her Herodian, Herodian citadel. citadel. So now you see that part right there. It says Tyre spread only the three towers of the Herodian citadel as a testimony to the city's former might. So you see what they left behind? They destroyed all the work that Zerubbabel and Nehemiah built. And they left the garbage that Herod built. You understand? So the, the walls that you see still standing today, the so-called temple, is what was built by Herod. Not what that was built by Nehemiah and Zerubbabel. That's not what that's, that was you're seeing on the news today in 2022. Okay? Go ahead. Josephus wrote that over a million people perished in the siege and the subsequent mm. fighting. Really? While contemporary study, studies dispute this figure, all agree that the siege had a major toll on human life. Meaning With Israelite many people, life. The life of the Israelites. Go ahead. With many people being killed and enslaved. Mm and large parts of the city destroyed. You see that thing? So it says, while contemporary studies dispute this figure, why would they dispute the figure? Because some said 350,000. No, 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 no. Josephus wrote that over a million people perished in the siege. It wasn't 350,000. So I agree with, the, with, with, with Josephus here. There's no way it was 350. It's impossible. There's no way. Read that part when it says, uh, yeah, you see that part when it says, um, the victory gave the Flavian dynasty legitimacy. Read that part. This victory gave the Flavian dynasty legitimacy to claim control over the empire. Go ahead. A time was held in Rome to celebrate mm. the fall of Jerusalem. And, mm. and two triumphal arcs were built to commemorate it. Mm. The treasures looted from the temple were put on display. The Ark of Tyrus. That Ark of Tyrus, when they took the menorah out of the temple, yeah, he said the treasures looted from the temple were put on display to shame us. Okay, go ahead. The destruction of Jerusalem and the second temple marked a major turning point in Jewish history. Read. The loss of mother city and temple necessitated a reshaping of Jewish culture to ensure its survival. Read. You see, now, at this point, we, we're trying to piece together what has happened because, remember, in 193 AD, 70 AD, they besieged the city. They destroyed us. You understand? Those are our forefathers that remained, that died, and those that fought became gladiators. 193 AD, Rome fell to the ground and we took over, which is the beginning of the Dark Ages. Go ahead. 
Judaism's temple-based sects, including the priesthood and the Sadducees, diminished mm. in importance. Go ahead. A new form of Judaism that became known as Reba Rabbanic, 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 Rabbanic Judaism, Rabbanic Judaism, meaning by rabbis. Rabbinic Judaism developed out of Pharisaic school, meaning the Pharisees. So you had the Sadducees, which diminished in importance. You understand? A new form of Judaism became known as Rabbinic Judaism, developed out of Pharisaic school. Meaning the, Phara the schools of the Pharisees, they developed a new form of Judaism called Rabbinic Judaism and eventually became the mainstream form of the religion. Many followers of, the, of Jesus of Nazareth also survived the city's destruction because we listened to the prophecies. We left. Many followers of, the, of Jesus of Nazareth also survived the city's destruction because we, we listened to the prophecy, we obeyed the prophecy, and guess what? We were spared. They spread his teachings across the Roman Empire, giving rise to the new religion of Christianity because remember, this new modern Christianity is different from this Christianity that we're reading about here. This Christianity that we're reading about here, it was the Christianity, it, it, it was called Christianity and eventually it was polluted by what? It was polluted by that black ashy devil called who? Uh, what's his name? Um, in 325 AD, all the Council of Nicaea, okay? Constantine. He's the one that polluted that. But this modern day Christian, modern the Christianity of today, modern day Christianity is not the Christianity of during the time of the spread of the, the spread of the teachings of the apostle who followed Christ. Eventually was polluted by paganism introduced by who? Constantine. Okay. So that's what this is really going into. After the war ended, a military camp of Legio X uh, Fretensis. Uh, was established on the city's ruins. Jerusalem was later refounded as the Roman colony of Elia Capitolina. Foreign cults were introduced as, and Jews were forbidden entry. You see these foreign cults, that's paganism. When they mix paganism with the teaching, with the true teachings of Christ, and they formed what is known as Christianity of back then. So today, when the white man took over, he just took over, he just took the Christianity that was started by uh, Constantine and put a spin on it and put white Jesus on it. You understand? And continued the pagan traditions mixed with the teachings of the Bible, which have been polluted now. You understand? And that's what the Christian church is about today. Okay? Let's see. The siege. Josephus places the siege in the second year of Vespasian, which corresponds to year 70 AD of the common era or year of our Lord. Titus began his speech a few days before Passover on the 14th of April, surrounding the city with three legions, okay, on the western side and the fourth and on the Mount of Olives where Christ was talking to the disciples to the east, okay. Uh, yeah, that's it on that. That's it on that. That is it on that, okay. Right, now, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. Now, give me Matthew. May, go back to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. Read verse 15 again. The book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Go ahead. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. So the abomination of desolation is what? is the people of the prince that will come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, which is 70 AD, which marked the what? The end, which marked the, which marked the last days. You understand? After when Christ died, it was the beginning of the last days. And then leading up to what? Leading up to the, the fall or the siege of Jerusalem, which continued the prophecy of the, the what? That marked the end of days. You understand? And the beginning of the Gentile rule until now we are still under the rule of the gentile from the time when christ was crucified rose the third day went back to the father 70 a.d we got destroyed the city was destroyed we can no longer uh sacrifice and all that we ran deeper into the continent those of us that left you understand 1600 years later the transatlantic slave trade happened you understand 500 a.d the sub-saharan slave trade happened 
500 AD, the Silk Road slave trade happened with the Chinese and we were scattered all over the earth until this day. Okay, go ahead, verse 16. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Mm -hmm. Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. You see what he's saying? He says, don't come back. Don't come back. Don't take anything. Just go. Okay, read. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Meaning, don't, with those that are in the countries, don't come back. Neither let them which are in the countries enter there into. He's repeating what we just read in Luke. Go ahead. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Because the, the mothers and fathers, they started to eat their own children. Cannibalism. Go ahead. But pray ye that your fight, that your flight be not in the winter, neither mm -hmm. on the Sabbath day. Because we were approaching the reward. We are going to observe the Passover because those of our forefathers that did not listen to or hearken to the prophecy, they got put to death. He says, pray, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Okay. The winter period, that's the main season. So we are saying, prepare yourself. Okay. Go ahead, watch this, verse 21 now. Come on. For then shall be great tribulation. It says, for then shall be great tribulation. Meaning what? From the time when Christ was crucified, the siege of Jerusalem, the transatlantic slave trade, the sub sahara slave trade, the Silk Road slave trade, apartheid, colonization, and forced migration. Those things will take place, you understand? It says, then after that, there's going to be great tribulation. Meaning the tribulation of the transatlantic, the sub-Saharan, forced migration, colonization, the Berlin Conference, the scramble for Africa. You understand? 1492 with Columbus and them and all that. That's not the tribulation he's talking about here. He's talking about the tribulation that we're going to experience now before the Lord returns. You understand? Read that again, verse 21. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 21. Read. For then shall be great tribulation. Mm -hmm. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this mm. time no, ahead. no ever shall be you see what he's telling you is that this tribulation that's coming it has never been seen ever since the world was started he it says it's never been seen before it says since the beginning of the world to this time no no ever shall be meaning is you cannot compare it to nothing Meaning, listen, there's going to be great distress in the land like we've never seen before and since the beginning of the world. Now watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of Daniel 12 verse 1. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. The book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. Go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great hmm. prince which standeth for the children of thy people which standeth for the children of thy people. Whose people? Daniel's people. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble, mm. such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Mm. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Mm. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. You see what he's saying? And at that time, during that time of trouble that has never been seen on this earth, it says, at that time, thy people, Daniel, shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book, the book of life of the land. Go ahead, verse two, watch this. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Mm -hmm. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now that's the lake of fire. You understand? That's the lake of fire. The second death is talking about here. Some will be awakened to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is the second death. You understand? Now, watch this. See, what we're reading here, what is this talking about? It's talking about the day that shall burn like an oven. Read that in Malachi 4 and 1. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven. 
Please, nuclear war, meaning what, what you are just see on the movies and on the videos and the documentaries when they show you World War II, World War II with Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 when they dropped the atomic bomb, is nothing compared to what you are going to, what's going to happen in these last days. Nothing compared to it. The type of bombs that they built, the type of explosive impact that they have built, the capability that they put in those nuclear warheads is nothing that you've never seen before. It's going to be 100,000 times more. Listen, there's a submarine that they build that can sink the whole of Jobek in a couple of hours. A submarine. A submarine capable of sinking the whole city. Not in a matter of, in a matter of minutes it can sink it into the ocean. One submarine. Think about that. Why the white man is doing all this? Because guess what? He is the god of war. Yeah. He is fitted for destruction. That's his vibration. Understand that. Okay. Read the verse again, verse one. The book of Malachi, chapter four, verse one. Mm -hmm. For behold, the day coming that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Mm. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. You see what he's saying? So what's coming here, listen, the Lord is, is using Malachi to show us, listen, this is what's going to take place. The type of destruction that's coming, listen, is nothing we've never seen before. You understand? Give me Joel 2 verse 15. It's going to be so bad, we're going to beg the most High God to spare us. To spare the people of Israel. That's what's going to take place on this earth. Understand that? Okay. Joel 2 verse 15. Read that. The book of Joel, chapter 2 verse 15. Go ahead. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Mm. Sanctify a fast, call mm. a solemn assembly. You see what he's saying? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. We must gather together as the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he's saying. We must fast often, pray often, give alms, keep the commandments of the Most High God, and have faith in His Son. Go ahead. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble mm. the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride cast out her closet. Go ahead, watch this. The bride out, the bride out of a closet. Come on. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let mm. them say, spare thy people, O Lord. You if see that thing? Inherited... Because, it, listen, it's going to be so bad we're going to beg the most High God to spare the children of Israel. Because here it says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, meaning what? Gather the people together, proclaim a fast, sanctify the congregation, teach the congregation God's commandments to stay focused. Assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. The children and the what? The infants and all that. The newborns. The most High God says, gather the people and sanctify the congregation. To sanctify them with what? The laws of God. The commandments of the Most High God. So that the Most High God, when judgment comes, when this great tribulation will come upon us, we will be ready. And the Most High will have mercy upon us to spare us when the nations persecute us. Read verse 17 again. The book of Joel chapter 2 verse 17. Read. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, mm -hmm. and give not the heritage to reproach, Go ahead. that the heathen should rule over them. Mm. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? So that the nations don't say among themselves, where is their God that's supposed to protect them? You understand? When they're persecuting us, the most said, God, we're going to have to pray. That means the leaders of the camps, guess what? We must be on point. We cannot be slacking in this business. Why? We must fast, keep the commandments, be sincere, you understand? Deal right and justly in the sight of the Most High God, 
so that when we pray to the Lord, the most that God will be able to spare us when they persecute us on that day. Read. Then will the Lord be jealous of his land and pity his people. You see that then, after we do that, we gather the people together, we fast, we call a solemn assembly, we sanctify the congregation, we pray to the most High God, and when we pray to the Lord, he says, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. The most High God going to get mad. You understand? The most High will direct these nations to go to the village of Jehoshaphat. Understand that. Go ahead. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and he mm. shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Meaning what? The most high God will be taking care of us because remember, during this time, there's not going to be food. There's going to be famine, war, pestilences like you are seeing now. Go ahead. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Meaning the military. Meaning that what? The government will deploy the military to what? To hunt the, teach the people the followers of the true followers of Christ that go to the streets and teach the commandments, wear fringes, you understand, observe the laws of the Most High, the high holy days and all that, the ceremonial laws, the moral laws, the civil laws, you understand, all of that. When we do all that, the, nation, the, the government will deploy their military on us. I hope you understand that. Read verse 20 again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. But I will move far off from you, the northern army. The northern army, come on. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate. That's the land of Jerusalem. Because remember, the land is, the land is barren and desolate. Because remember, who's ruling now? The abomination of desolation. That's who the abomination of desolation is. Esau, Edom. They are the abomination that make it desolate. You understand? So it says the Northern Army, remember, America has military bases in every country on earth. You understand? Including South Africa. You understand? So it says they, meaning they're going to influence the South African military to go against us. Go ahead. With his face toward the East Sea. The, and East, sea, the, the, the East Sea is the Dead Sea. The East Sea is the Dead Sea. Go ahead. And is in the part toward the utmost sea. That's the Mediterranean Sea that you see up there. Okay, go ahead. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. They've done great things, meaning speaking great things and blasphemy against the Most High God and against his people. And the Most High God is going to what? Is going to gather the people at the valley of Jehoshaphat. You understand? Get that in Joel chapter 3. I'm almost done. Joel chapter 3. Read verse, verse 14. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 14. Go ahead. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. Mm. For the day of the Lord is near. In the valley of decision. That's when the Most High God will make a decision about these nations. He's going to plead with them by fire. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. For what? For the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the Lord will do. The most are going to do that thing. Our job, brothers and sisters, is to believe on him that chosen us to be soldiers in this truth. Get that in 2nd Isaiah chapter 15, verse 20. Okay? You know, now, read verse 19. Because the same thing that Ezra is saying is the same thing that Christ said in Matthew 24, 22. Read that for me. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 19. Mm -hmm. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the soul mm. and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You see that thing? Matthew 24, 21, it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. So it says what? It says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, such as never been since the world started. Go ahead. Behold, saith God, 
I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. The when he says I will call together all the kings of the earth is multitudes that will be gathered together at the veil of Jehoshaphat that we read in Joel 3.14. Come on. Which are from the rising of the sun. That's China. From the south, from the east, and Libanus. To That's turn Lebanon, themselves, come on. To turn themselves to one against another. To turn themselves one against another. For the nations to go to war. That's the purpose of the most High God. To turn the nations one against another. To pour. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, no, no, no. okay all praise. Read the verse 20 again. Second Ezra. Second, second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 20. Behold, said Paul, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, mm. which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. You see that thing? And to what? To repay the things that they've done to them. To pay the things that they have done to them. That them is us. Go ahead. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. Mm -hmm. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus mm. saith the Lord God. Go ahead. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. My mm. And my soul shall not seize over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. That's Esau, Edom, Idumia, the United States of America, these European nations and their allies, China, Russia, Europe, uh, Japan, Saudi, Iran, Iraq, so on and so forth. They're all going to pay for what they've done to us. That say the Lord. This is justice. You understand? We must pay for vengeance. Because why? Right now we are being ruled over by who? Now give me Luke 21. Luke 21 now. We're almost done. Luke chapter 21. Read verse 24 now. Because right now we are living in the times of the Gentiles. But their time of rulership is coming to an end. Because Jacob is waking up. You understand? Because all the things that Christ was talking about, the prophecies that will mark the end of his coming and the end of the Gentile rule, we've read about them. We went into the abomination that make it desolate. Okay? Luke 21. Read verse 24. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. Read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword mm -hmm. and shall be led away captive unto, into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You see that thing? And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Talk about the Israelites, our forefathers, that ignored the prophecy and shall be led away captives into all nations. We were led captives into all nations by our slave ships, colonization, forced migration, and apartheid. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So who will be in the land in the last days? Where is, when Israel is scattered among all nations, who will be in the land? The white people calling themselves Jewish. Amalek. The Amalekites, the bastards in our land, calling themselves Jewish, will be in our land when we are scattered all over the earth as slaves being oppressed by these nations. That's what Christ is telling us. In the last days, before Israel takes over, somebody else will be in our land calling themselves us. And when we talk about it, they're going to say we are anti-Semitic, meaning we are anti-ourselves. You cannot make this up. Okay? But what we're reading here is big Bible prophecy. It lines up with what's happening right now. Okay? Now, I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Most High. All praise to the Lord. Let's break bread, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when, had, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give Amen. the Lord. Oh, please, Mr. Mosai. Oh, please.